Hello and welcome to the Center for Collective Learning. Today we have the pleasure to have Davide Casaleggio and Renato Marchetti with us. Davide and Renato work in the creation of this platform called Rousseau, which many of you might not have heard of, but actually it's an important political force in Italy. It is part you know, of uh, the digital environment of a political movement called the Five Star Movement, which has become an extremely important political force in Italy over the last decade. And it represents an, a very interesting example of how digital democracy is being implemented with both its successes and challenges. So we thought that it was extremely interesting to hear from them. You know, uh, they have experience, you know, uh, not on a digital democracy experiment, but actually putting some of these ideas to practice with all of the challenges, difficulties, and, and, and what that entails in a political environment. And I assume that Italy might have even its own difficulties on its own when it comes to adopting or understanding or dealing with this type of technology. So with that, and no further ado, I would like to give the floor to Davide and Renato, who are going to tell us about their experience, you know, building, managing, and working, you know, with the Rousseau platform and their idea for a holocratic society. Thank you, Caesar. And I will just try to share a brief presentation of what we are going to talk about today. So uh, as you clearly said, uh, uh, the Rousseau organization, the Rousseau Association, uh, deals with the development of the uh, anonymous platform uh, for digital democracy. And we work every day to spread uh, uh, the knowledge and the notion of digital, demo digital democracy and digital citizenship. So we deal with uh, digital rights, basically making people and the citizenship un understand what uh, are the potentialities of the internet and of new technologies on society. So today we will try to give you a brief idea of what uh, um, an autocratic organization in such a um, five movement can be achieved through the use of technologies and the use of the internet. So for those who do not know what the five movement is, the five Stars movement uh, is a movement of citizens that was uh, born in um, 2009 officially but the first experiments of uh, participation of citizens started back in uh, 2005 in the early of the uh, internet era with people gathering in squares in streets uh, in the all the cities uh, in Italy to ask for more uh, political involvement to ask for a renewal of the political uh, organizations uh, of the political parties and of the relationship between the voters and the um, electoral representatives in the parliament and in all the political institutions in Italy. So um, the founders of the Five movement, uh, Gian Roberto Casaleggio and Beppe Grillo, were the first to understand that uh, to answer to those needs, the internet and new technologies could be uh, the right tools uh, to do that. And uh, that's why um, the Five Stars movement uh, started growing and growing using the internet to gather people uh, around the civic themes, so, so the environment, public water, or uh, um, you know, anti-corruption laws that were required by the population in Italy. And we started organizing uh, events uh, all over the territory, all over the country, uh, creating a movement that was born in the digital and was then structured uh, in the physical world. So uh, that's how the Five Stars Movement uh, was born. And uh, uh, Rousseau, the organization that uh, uh, we work in, um, has had the role and has the role to manage the whole technological, legal, um, bureaucratic infrastructure of the movement right now. And to do that, we developed uh, some tools that David will explain you to later in order to do that, to uh, maintain uh, possi the possibility to um, attract people, to involve people in the participatory uh, decision-making process. Because the philosophy of the Five Stars Movement is this. Um, it is to create uh, an organization that uh, eliminates completely the hierarchies. So, so there is no um, hierarchy, there is no uh, top-down structure. It is a more horizontal, flat structures in which uh, activists and members of the movement uh, can contribute with their experiences, with their uh, competencies, where they knowledge uh, to common uh, uh, goals that are decided by the members of the movement uh, themselves. And that is something that uh, really gathered the attention of the people uh, during the last years and during the last decade uh, in Italy. 
because they understood that uh, this kind of way to do politics uh, was revolutionary, was new, was something that uh, was required by the population uh, to overcome the uh, classical and traditional uh, right and left uh, partition of the political uh, thoughts. And uh, that is something that uh, the internet and new technologies uh, really helped to achieve. And um, basically that's uh, how the movement in Italy managed to pass from um, the 25% in the general elections in 2013 to the 32% of elections uh, votes uh, in the uh, general elections of 2018. We created a movement of people that believed that uh, um, the internet uh, had the possibility to uh, connect people, to make them uh, uh, pursue goals that were defined on the internet and then could be translated into the physical world. Uh, and I'm talking about social reforms, uh, economic reforms, uh, the protection of the environment, uh, uh, themes that were not uh, linked per se to ideologies, but were structured and were developed uh, through the internet and through the social media, through the uh, interaction one each other, also through the Russo platform that we de developed in the last years in order to uh, achieve common goals. So in order to do that, uh, uh, we created uh, the tools uh, and we are working every day to uh, strengthen uh, the participatory um, processes uh, through the platform that uh, we are, we've been working on and uh, um, developing uh, around the needs of the members of the five movement, uh, uh, listening to them, mapping their needs and uh, giving answer, even technical answer to their needs uh, and also uh, involving them in the very, um, how can I say, uh, designing process of the platform and the, the whole technological environment uh, of the movement. And uh, that's why basically we uh, want to show you in this presentation, some initiatives, some tools, some um, some ways that we use in the last years to structure the movement, to bring the movement uh, uh, to a growth uh, in the last years and uh, make uh, you understand how uh, it is possible to create and have a movement of citizens in, a, in one of the major countries in the European Union and I would say in the world uh, to, to govern <laughs> a country. So, uh, with the, this brief presentation, I will leave the floor to Mr. Davide Casaleggio, the president of uh, the Rousseau Association. We will talk to you about, uh, we will explain you the history of the movement uh, more in detail uh, than I did, the tools that we developed in, in the last years uh, on the Rousseau platforms and the initiatives that we are currently uh, pursuing and bringing forward uh, in the last months uh, in order to uh, strengthen and uh, enlarge the participatory movement uh, within and outside the movement. Thank you, Davide. Thank you, Renato. Um, well, yes, we'll go into a brief history of the last 15 years of uh, what we've been up to. So obviously I won't go into uh, too many details, but uh, I'll be open to all the questions you will have uh, uh, after my presentation, so I'll be happy to uh, dig into whatever you are most interested in. Um, so, yes, it all started with a blog. Uh, in uh, This story started with, uh, with a blog that we uh, created in 2005. It was Bet.it, uh, and now it has changed name, so it's uh, Il blog delle stelle.it. But uh, at the time, it was uh, a blog that we suggested to a comedian that was, uh, the, his name is Beppe Grillo, the most fam famous comedian in Italy. And uh, we started off with uh, this using technology to get people involved. At the end of the same year, it was actually uh, priced by the uh, new, by the Il Sole 24, which is the financial uh, newspaper in Italy has the best website for uh, for information and news in Italy. So that was a, a great achievement that we managed to do in just one year from uh, from uh, the, uh, the starting off of uh, the this blog and 
uh, the, the, the end of the year, getting the, the prize from the Solo Integratore. In uh, the next year, we actually were the 28th most visited blog in the world uh, uh, in the Tenerati listing. So we actually managed to uh, build up a, a great uh, uh, content and great participation just in the few, first few months, uh, just with the blog. Uh, well, we started off also uh, getting in people involved and, well, uh, other prices came uh, along in uh, uh, years uh, afterwards, uh, one in uh, 2008 with the most influential blog in the world, uh, 8th or 9th, uh, I don't remember. But uh, anyway, we had many prizes in, uh, in the first few years for the blog. Uh, I must say that initially it was prizes from Italian institutions and then uh, Italian institutions started not pricing prices to, to this initiative anymore because they, they probably were more um, aware of the impact that this, uh, this initiative was having. Uh, we started off uh, getting people involved offline because that was something uh, we were conscious of, getting people not only involved uh, on the blog, we had thousands of comments for every post, post that we were publishing on the blog. Uh, but we wanted to get people involved in their towns and physically getting them to know each other. So we started using Meetup. Uh, was, uh, we, we saw an example uh, from uh, Howard Dean uh, in the year before used in the, in the States. He was uh, a candidate uh, from uh, Vermont uh, for the presidentials uh, for the, uh, the United States presidential elections. So it was pretty strange that uh, someone from Vermont could actually run for the presidentials in the States. But going and seeing his uh, strategy, it was a use of uh, uh, self-organized people, activists, uh, members that uh, were wanting to help him in a, a self-structured uh, system using at the time Meetup. So that for that reason, we started using it initially too. And in a couple of years, we actually uh, started to, to be the uh, uh, main user in the world of Meetup for political uh, uh, purposes. So this obviously helped us a lot and it was not confined to Italy, it was something that uh, was uh, all over the, the world that people were getting together to discuss topics that were presented on a blog. In 2007-2008 we started uh, going into the squares and getting people uh, um, presenting their, their issues in the squares and the major uh, event, uh, you, you saw a few photos just before uh, of this event, V-Day, the Vaffanculo uh, Day, which was a, a, a day that uh, was used to, to get people to sign uh, what we call a civic law, a law presented to citizens uh, that at the time was uh, to uh, get people uh, that were actually standing as MPs in Parliament at the time, but that were condemned, criminal, uh, that were criminally convicted for uh, various crimes from terrorism to uh, uh, fiscal uh, problems to whatever else. And so we, we started saying, well, why don't we get these people out of Parliament or at least uh, get uh, the uh, citizens that vote for them conscious that uh, they are voting for a criminal uh, before getting them into uh, Parliament. So what we actually have managed now to do, this is a bit the end of a spoiler at the end of the story, is uh, from that event that we were presenting Lodor, they actually finished in, in nothing because at the time uh, Parliament was not uh, intelligent, uh, sufficiently intelligent to uh, deal with the law, uh, we actually managed to do a law uh, now in government uh, to address that specific issue. Uh, at the time, we had to gather 50,000 uh, signatures to present this law in a term of six months. Uh, we managed to collect 350,000 
signatures, so not 50,000. And uh, we managed to collect in one weekend, so not in six months. So that was obviously one first big event that uh, uh, told us that something was happening also uh, not only in the but also in the country. Uh, that obviously gave us uh, the, um, the um, well, the start to manage to do other events in 2009 with the, the V2 event, with V3 event, etc. And at a certain point, we got uh, conscious that this was something more than uh, people uh, listening or writing on a blog. Uh, so we decided to uh, uh, create a movement. In 2009, in the 4th of October, we created the Five Star Movement. Uh, this movement was, uh, is uh, something that uh, started off as a, a civic movement, as a movement with just a few laws, uh, in, internal laws, uh, like uh, uh, people would participate in uh, uh, the institutions, uh, but uh, with uh, just uh, maximum two terms, they would be citizens in the institutions. They would uh, bring the voice of people in the institutions. And so they would not be uh, representatives. They would be uh, uh, final people. People would be part of a network that would be in the institutions for a certain time. Uh, time. Uh, so the first, uh, uh, the, the stars, the, so the, these five stars were actually five topics that we were bringing along in uh, with the blog, which was public water, sustainable stride, uh, transport, environmental terrorism, right to access the internet, so all the digital citizenship topic that uh, we are now bringing along, sustainable development. So it was uh, mainly uh, focused on uh, um, green topics, uh, as we might label them today, uh, and uh, digital topics uh, for participation, for access to rights that uh, people can exercise online. So having internet access was obviously one of the basic uh, rights to be able to enabling rights to uh, open up this uh, digital citizenship that we um, managed to focus more upon. So this uh, um, this movement was based, I was saying before, it was based on some few basic rules that uh, were based on the topics we were discussing and we were uh, bringing it forward thanks to the blog. For example, was that if, if you want uh, to to be part of the movement, that's okay. You can also have a criminal record, that's no problem. But if you want to be a representative in institutions, then you must have a clean criminal record. If you want to be uh, representing the Five Star Movement in uh, institutions, then you must at the most have two terms in uh, institutions and then go back and be an old citizen. Um, we then uh, decided to not have, uh, um, not access uh, public funding. So we had uh, uh, a lot of occasions to access uh, public funding. For example, the first time in uh, uh, the in, in Parliament, we were entitled to, to 42 million euros for public funding of the movement, and we just said no. To public funding, and there were many more uh, occasions uh, before and after that. Uh, we managed to uh, fund all our initiatives with uh, uh, crowd crowdfunding. With in uh, in average, it was 30, 40 euros uh, for person uh, to to fund the the initiatives that we we brought forward, and uh, uh, the candidates that. Uh, we propose as the move as a movement as a five star movement so are all uh, uh, also candidates that get presented online uh, actually present themselves online there's no one that chooses 
who gets uh, who gets in, uh, and uh, then they get actually voted uh, by the members of the five thousand. That today are around two hundred thousand, with a hundred and seventeen thousand that have the right to vote. Um, that decide who is actually going in to the institutions or who will be presented in the list of the Five Star Movement. So we started off this in 2012 and from then on we and now today are around 330 uh, votes uh, that uh, uh, we've been doing in these years. That's an average of uh, uh, one every nine days if you count the single vote or one every 20 days if you have the, the voting session. Uh, so we started off with uh, regional and local elections in between 2010 and 2012, and then we went for the uh, um, main elections uh, uh, on a regional level. So we and Sicilian, we got 50, around 15 percent, and then we went into Parliament in 2013. Uh, we got uh, 25 percent. Uh, of the votes uh, that was uh, counting 8,700,000 uh, votes. Uh, and that was actually the first, uh, the most voted uh, political formation in Italy uh, at the time. So it was something incredible from zero to uh, 25% to 8,700,000 votes. Uh, first time entering parliament, it was something really, really, uh, exceptional for at least for Italy, but I think for uh, the world. Uh, so following that, uh, we had uh, the um, uh, second uh, uh, entering in the parliament that was in 2018, and at that time we got 32 percent of the of the votes uh, to to enter parliament. So that was uh, something. Uh, um, um, Obviously, great. At the first time round, we were, went to opposition. The second time round in Parliament, we actually went to govern the um, the Italy. Uh, at the time today, we are now in the third government, uh, always sustained by the Five Star Movement uh, in this uh, legislation. Uh, said uh, sustained by the Five Star Movement because obviously with uh, um, with MPs, with so many MPs, we entered uh, the Parliament with uh, around 330 MPs uh, in 2018. Obviously, it's difficult to do governments without the Five Star Movement. Um, so uh, we voted every time around. We asked the members of the Five Star Movement if they wanted uh, this uh, these governments. So the Five Star Movement actually gave to all the three governments that we had in the last three years in Italy and they gave green light with a vote on Rousseau. So uh, in those days we had all the people in Italy waiting for the, the members of the Five Star Movement voting uh, on Rousseau and every time we did uh, uh, a single day vote. So it actually went in a, a world record uh, for uh, uh, participation in a single uh, voting day, because uh, we, we got uh, uh, tens of thousands uh, of people uh, in uh, with a world record that was 79,000 in one day uh, vote. Uh, that was actually not even in 24 hours, but it was in uh, uh, 10 hours, if I remember correctly. So it probably has uh, many, many more. Uh, values of um, participation. Um, so this is obviously not tied only to Parliament, but also to uh, um, uh, to uh, to city councils. Uh, we've been presenting lists in uh, hundreds of city councils around Italy. We have today forty-two mayors, so like the. The city of uh, Rome or the city of Turin are today governed by uh, Virginia Raggi in Rome and Turin, and we have many others in uh, uh, mayors uh, around Italy. We have 86 uh, regional city councils, uh, 10 members of European Parliament, uh, 
75 uh, senators and 170, 64 deputies at the time, at the moment. Uh, so this is a bit of the history. I've been years in uh, uh, 20 minutes, so it's uh, been pretty rapid. I know I don't have much time more, so I'll uh, try to go uh, very briefly uh, around the tools we have. We have a public activist profile uh, that uh, where the single member can show what, what he's done and uh, he has merits on what he's actually been up to uh, and uh, he presents the post that he's been publishing on the blog, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then we have uh, uh, the, um, a possibility to look out for uh, people that represent the, um, this is actually open to everyone. So anyone, you don't have to be registered to have a look around. Uh, the, you go on uh, Rousseau dot, uh, look for Rousseau on, on Google and you'll find it. Um, so as I was saying, you can look for spokespeople and uh, uh, activists and you can look, look around uh, for various characteristics. And then uh, uh, let's go forward so we can uh, look around everything. Uh, we have a blog, uh, the blog delle stelle. Uh, we today have uh, 1,300 uh, articles with, uh, uh, I actually saw also comments and we in, uh, I think it's around 17, 17 million comments on everything we've uh, been uh, uh, doing. So it's something that it's very part being very participated in these 15 years. Um, we have, uh, this is always on the Blog de la Stelle, but let's go forward uh, to, to be able to keep uh, the, the timing right. Uh, as I was saying, we have the voting system uh, that allows, uh, uh, we have had uh, 347 votes since uh, 2012. This is both on candidates, uh, uh, on topics, uh, uh, this is, for example, an example of uh, European elections. We had 2,000, well, around 3,000 people that uh, came forward to, they wanted to become um, um, MP in, uh, uh, in European Parliament. 200 were promoted to the second ballot. That was uh, members of the Five Star Movement that were voting for these uh, members. And 60 finished up in the list that was presented in uh, uh, at the fine, uh, uh, for uh, at the political level, uh, the European um, the European elections, and fourteen of these actually finished up elected in European Parliament. So this is something that can show you what happens normally uh, if we want to uh, present a list of seventy-six people, uh, three thousand people come forward and they want to be in that list. And then we get uh, those uh, 117,000 people vote to uh, uh, suss out uh, who actually will finish up in the list. Uh, we've uh, been uh, uh, working a lot on how this mechanism actually works. So we've uh, um, put in a system that is the merit system that was introduced in 2000 and. Uh, 18, if I remember correctly, that allows everyone to be ranked uh, by uh, merits. So there's 10 merits that uh, evaluate participation, training, personal profile, and special merit that uh, allow to order the, um, the people that uh, get ranked for voting. So one of the main problem is, okay, I have 3000 people Come forward. I have 117 people, I think 117,000 people that have to choose them. How do I present this list uh, so that uh, it's uh, so that the result will be the best result possible? Uh, so we in, uh, was we define this method, this merits method. Uh, that allows people to be ranked uh, for the how many merits they have. So you can have maximum 10 merits. And it's clear 
how you acquired those merits and why you are in that position. So there's no calculation of strain, strange number that so no one really knows how to calculate that number. It's the 10 merits, how to obtain them. And if you have them, you are in a certain position. And if you have the same number of merits, then there's a, a random order that every time you see the same list, the, the random order is, uh, is different. So this is something we've applied and uh, for the results we had, and we're presenting, we're helping someone actually to paper on the results of that, uh, um, uh, of that uh, uh, system, uh, the, the results are very solid. It was the best uh, uh, list uh, on various characteristics, uh, not obviously the political characteristics, but on the uh, profile uh, characteristics. Uh, so, well, these are other uh, examples, but obviously we have plenty of numbers of all these 15 years. Uh, other uh, systems, uh, we've used votes to define the program. So, for example, for the 2018, we had uh, uh, a year and a half uh, getting uh, people involved a week after week. Uh, getting uh, experts to explain single topic, single topics of uh, uh, the voting of uh, the program, and getting voting on the priority on uh, uh, on on what we would, should be choosing on that specific uh, uh, topic. And that allowed us to uh, to have a program that had been discussed for a year and a half by over 120,000 people at the time. Uh, this was, uh, and then we have political choices that can be uh, flash political choices. So maybe from one day to another or one week to another, we have to choose something that will uh, have uh, impact in parliament or in uh, a town council. So we get the people involved and uh, to, to get people uh, choosing. And then obviously we have internal choices like statutes, re, uh, rules and whatever that uh, we, we get people involved. Uh, we also uh, give back uh, money from uh, the, um, uh, the money that uh, the RMPs, for example, receive uh, because we've uh, been uh, following this battle that uh, the, um, the revenue that we uh, receive is too much. Uh, at least this is our uh, battle at the, from the beginning. So we decided to say, okay, we'll get the money that is too much for us and we'll give it back to the uh, state. But uh, in, to, in choosing which destinations we should be giving back this money, we get the members of the Five Star Movement to decide. And it's always public destination. Um, so we have uh, many other um, many other tools that uh, we we have uh, 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 we actually have 22 different functions on the resource platform uh, this is uh, lexis Kriti. i don't think we have we will have time to see them all but uh, uh, lexis Kriti allows people members to propose a law that then if it gets voted by other members will be uh, taken to parliament uh, to, date, to date, there's 26 laws that have already been uh, taken to, to Parliament. And then we have also the other version. So if uh, an, an MP wants to propose uh, and is discussing a law in Parliament, they will discuss it for 60 days online uh, beforehand uh, with the members of the Firestone Movement. So there's many, uh, so uh, Renato, go, go, go fast on uh, the various topics. I'll just uh, uh, say uh, what they all are. Open Comuni is, uh, allows people to present a civic list for the town council. Sharing allows to uh, uh, share acts that get presented in uh, uh, the various town councils. So people from other town council can go and copy them and can share them. It's uh, an e-learning platform that allows to learn how to uh, how to use the uh, 
civic uh, tools that uh, we have. So how to go into Parliament, how to go into European Parliament, uh, etc. How to read um, a public uh, a law, etc. And then we have uh, plenty of events that uh, we we create to create a, a understanding of these tools that allow us to uh, use and to be part of. Uh, uh, a civic uh, and uh, uh, well, a digital that we have today. So, uh, and I see to, I see now that we've actually uh, ended the the time that we have uh, for for this presentation. So, I'd be happy to uh, answer any uh, questions that you might have. Uh, so then we can might go into and drill into any uh, specific topic you might be interested in. Thank you, Davide. Uh, and thank you, Renato, for, for the presentation. I think it was you know, very useful for me to understand a little bit of you know, uh, the history and, and how you know, the platform is working. Um, I have a question, and then I'm going to start inviting some people in. Um, but uh, when you look at the history, you guys uh, started in 2005. And at that time, the relationship between you know, technology and democracy was very different. You know, in 2005, uh, we're talking about a time before Facebook, before Twitter, before most major social media was adopted. And it was a time in which people were talking about Web 2.0, which today nobody talks about. But it was the fact that Wikipedia had emerged. And Wikipedia was this example that the web could make us collectively intelligent. Now. Uh, the web then tried to develop things to imitate Wikipedia in a way. And, and, and a lot of the justification for social media originally was based on this collective intelligence that Wikipedia had shown. But, but social media did not live, of course, to that standard, you know, and it became a space that is, you know, polarizing, a space that is full of discussion and so forth. And now the relationship between technology and democracy is quite different, you know. Uh, people tend to have like a negative association between technology and democracy compared to maybe the more hopeful ideas that people had in 2003, 2004, 2005, when the movement was, and, and these ideas were getting started. So I want to understand how, how has that, you know, impacted the way that you operate? You know, a lot of people have like this now knee-jerk reaction that they think technology, democracy, oh, this is, you know, Facebook or Twitter, and, and they see it negatively. So... I, I wanted to understand in your context, you've lived through this period. You lived through a time in which social media did not exist. You got started, then you grew with social media, but then social media moved from being something positive to something that people now a lot of times associate negatively. You know? uh, and I wanted to understand your journey through that change in that cultural landscape. Well, I think uh, we've been studying a lot and creating a lot of... Um... Uh, occasions to discuss digital uh, and I think people that today do really understand what digital citizenship means uh, know that you need tools to exercise your rights it's not just a question of having a right uh, in digital citizenship you need uh, tools to exercise those rights and uh, you talk about uh, Facebook or Twitter or uh, other general platforms, you're not necessarily talking about tools to exercise uh, all rights. You're just talking about one right, the uh, freedom of speech. Uh, so uh, I think uh, people that today have used uh, platforms like saw now know that it's possible to uh, use technology in a different way, in a way to exercise those rights that can be here with saw in this presentations, for example, to be able to candidate uh, oneself to the European Parliament. Is it possible? Yes, it is. Can every, can every member of an organization, of a political organization, can they actually be able to just raise their hand and say, I would like to be uh, a member of the European Parliament. Is it possible? Yes, it is. So when uh, 
political organization uh, that uh, are typically uh, parties, so with a top-down uh, organization, a hierarch hierarchical uh, organization, uh, say, is it possible? They will say, yes, it might be possible, but we have different rules. So we have a different approach to that. We have people that uh, get uh, elected, and then those people would draw out the list of people that will present we will present for the European elections. If you have a holocratic holocratic uh, organization, then you need different tools. You will use different tools. Uh, so it's not a question uh, of technology. It's also a question of organizational approach that you will have. So if you have both, if you have a holocratic approach to your organization, and if you have the, the tools or you create the tools or you go out and, and fish out the, the tools that you can use uh, to be able to get people party, then you will have a good approach to technology. Then obviously there's many things you can do better in technology or whatever, or even with paper, uh, even writing uh, with paper. Uh, there's always a possibility to uh, do better. Uh, but today, I think the people that know how to use it and have used it uh, normally have a good approach to technology in politics. Thank you. Yeah, I, my, my question was a little bit more on the on the cultural or emotional reaction and landscape, but, but I, I think that's a good answer. So um, I'm going to now start opening the floor. I'm going to invite uh, Gerardo Machnik. You know, uh, please, if you can start your camera, and and he had a couple of questions that that he was interested in. You are muted, Gerardo. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Good. Good day. Good afternoon. Good morning, depending where where you are in the world. Uh, I think you covered a little bit the question by asking on the technological platforms and evolution, uh, but I still like to keep part of what I ask. And uh, I'd like to bring it more into the international experiences. Have there been any international transfers or adoption of these tools elsewhere in the world? And uh, maybe you can comment a little bit about uh, rational discourse and moderation. Uh, I don't know if you have some kind of attempts to hijack the tool or, or disturb it in some way that uh, goes, uh, uh, makes uh, it uh, apart from rational discourse. So I, I'd like to hear from those two things. Thank you. Well, the international uh, approach, yes, we've been uh, in contact with many organizations abroad. Uh, until now, we've shared knowledge, experience with them, and uh, it has been uh, very interesting to uh, have different points of views and different experiences from the rest of the world and giving our experience back. Now we are thinking of uh, giving um, giving out also the, the software to be able to uh, share also the, the tools. So this is something we, we, are, uh, we are now talking with uh, a few organizations. Um, on, the, uh, on the second question you were uh, talking about, um, yes, we have been uh, uh, the moderation. The moderation is something that has to be um, designed in the tool itself. Uh, you can't think of moderation after you've done all, you've done a, a good tool and then, okay, let's see how to, to keep it uh, uh, working. You, you can't do it like that. Um, we have approached the issue of moderation with a blog. Obviously there we had uh, uh, also from the right beginning, we had thousands of comments uh, for every post we, we put out. So we had a problem of uh, uh, moderation, keeping the people talking uh, on the topic and not uh, off topic and et cetera. So it was um, something we dealt uh, with uh, uh, after the tool, because at the time we just got the blog and started talking on the blog. So we didn't design the tool for, uh, for the moderation. So that's uh, 
uh, took us uh, around all the problems of moderation. At the end, we just gave uh, the self-moderation uh, system with a second level uh, in, uh, intervening in, in, in a special occasion. So we, uh, we, we gave the possibility of, for the people to moderate the, the blog itself. So we have a special, uh, we have a, a special uh, algorithm. So uh, the people, if it's uh, a certain number of people that say that that's off topic, and if those people are people that have actually done good, a good job in the past, then they will actually moderate it uh, directly. If, uh, if they haven't done a good job in the past, then the second level, or there might be other uh, activities that happen after that. Uh, in general, when we've designed tools, uh, we've tried to put as central the value that had to be created by that tool. Uh, so uh, to not have a moderation at all, uh, but just have the tool to get uh, the value out in, in general. So for example, in the ranking of uh, the people that get candidates in the 3000 people that were candidate but for the European Parliament, they can uh, candidate themselves, they just have to uh, respect some rules. But if you respect those rules and they, they are uh, checked, then you can go into the system. But if you have uh, participation, if you don't have a good CV, if you don't have, you won't be ranked at the top, you will be ranked to the bottom. So that, that's a way of moderating the, uh, the, the tool with the design of the tool and not having someone uh, getting the people out or, or doing something afterwards. Thank you. Uh, next we have Andy Matias. Could you please turn on your camera? And remember like here we're in a friendly environment. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, thanks for the talk. It was really interesting. Uh, you know, I just happened to, I was reading about Five Star Movement uh, on Wikipedia, and I see the description there, which was I was like surprised about. Um, and I think that there's probably some interesting story about how it says that, that there's a you know, anti-immigration um, uh, slant to, to, the, to the Five Star Movement. Uh, I'm assuming this is because you don't have complete control, and this is uh, what people believe if you know a direct democracy this is something that happens but i mean what are your what are your thoughts on this is there a, a story behind how this came to be well actually uh, on the immigration uh, laws that have been passed in parliament uh, uh, i don't think uh, they would respect what you just said so uh, um what gets written on wikipedia obviously is one of the topics uh, of uh, free, freedom of speech and uh, moderation and whatever else. Uh, obviously, when you talk about uh, political formations in the description in, on Wikipedia, it's always uh, very tied to who's written it and who's written that page. Uh, I don't think uh, that respects uh, the, um, the approach of the Five Star Movement. And I think I would suggest if that's uh, a topic that interests you to see the laws that have been passed by the fast Star movement in these uh, uh, three governments. Um, obviously, uh, it's been uh, together with other political formations. So it's been with a, uh, with a right wing uh, formation in the first government. It's been on a left wing formation in the second government. And now it's uh, with both right and, and left. So it's, uh, uh, obviously, the, the governments and who's proposed the various laws, you should look into that and, and see what uh, has actually been brought forward by the Fast Star Movement. Thank you. And uh, next we go, you know, to the long lost son of John Lennon, Michael Lennon. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Michael Lennon calling from Washington, D.C., affiliated with Georgetown, excuse me, George Washington University. And um, thank you. Um, congratulations on uh, this great work. I wanted to ask um, a little bit about um, what you feel is uh, the source of the greatest improvements that you're seeing. Some would, uh, some would say that it might be the removal of bad actors, 
Some would say it might be the diversification of knowledge sources participating in public discourse. Others might say the streamlining of civil processes or, or benchmarking is something that I also saw you talking about, comparing municipalities, what they're doing here versus doing there. What would you say has been the greatest source of, of improvement, the driver of collective learning and thinking? Well, I think getting pe people involved directly in, uh, in politics uh, is something that uh, you need to do not only 30 days before election. Uh, and so using digital tools to get people involved in uh, defining a law, defining a program, learning what it means to go into parliament, uh, being able to share documents from one town council to another is all tied to the fact that uh, you create a new uh, awareness of your role as a citizen mm -hmm. in a, a complex sex system. So mm -hmm. I think that the main objective of this digital participation is, has been the awareness of uh, people of their impact uh, that they can have on uh, uh, politics, not only voting, uh, but also in the five years that uh, uh, precede that uh, vote or that go after that vote. And uh, I think digital tools have created a great awareness of uh, our, uh, our power. Uh, another concept uh, is, uh, that has changed a lot is the concept of power. Uh, until now, we have had the concept of power on other people, on the power of having a chair, uh, on the power of being someone. Um, today, I think we have uh, creating, we are creating a new power, the power to be able to do th things. And this is not a limited uh, definition of power uh, as it was before. It it's an unlimited, infinite uh, uh, concept of power. Uh, so this, uh, I think this new concept of uh, political power we have today is something that is now emerging. Thank you. I'm going to have Two more contributors here. Uh, we have Nicolo Pescetelli. I assume that must be Italian or, or at some point it was, you know. Ciao, Nicolo. Hi. Um, hi, David. Uh, David. Thanks a lot for the, for the talk. It was uh, yeah, truly inspiring. Um, yeah, Cesar, like mentioned, I'm, I'm also like a fellow Italian uh, and, you know, admirer of, of, uh, of your work. Um, yeah, my question was, uh, you know, about like, the, the, the early stages, right? Like when, when, when you start to grow like this project that has been you know, super ambitious and, and, and super uh, also idealistic, right? Uh, what, what were like, you know, the, the criticisms that the early people uh, received? Uh, what was like the, the most common? And, and maybe what was the best answer to sort of quiet those criticisms so to say, uh, we can do it? Wow, that's a difficult question. Well, I guess uh, uh, people always think, uh, uh, well, we are used to think that uh, if you do something new, it's not possible to do that in a different way uh, as it has always been done. So um, when uh, uh, you'd say, okay, we, we'd like to not to, to receive public funding, uh, and we presented uh, a civic law or a referendum to, uh, to say, let's take off uh, uh, public funding from newspapers or, let's, uh, or propose the let's take away the public funding to uh, political parties. Um, and the first issue is, oh, you can't do that. Uh, all the parties need to public funding. Um, or uh, we would like people to be able to propose themselves to be able to candidate themselves in uh, institution directly without having uh, layers of people to say you yes you know in, in the list uh, and they would say well you can't do that uh, you you have to have someone to sort out the thing so the first level is possible it never has been done before so you can't do it uh, and then you do it you you go into parliament, you are the main force 
uh, presented in Parliament, you have only people that have been presented by the members of, uh, of the movement. You say no to 42 million euros, and then they say, okay, you've done it, but you, uh, you haven't done it because you it's not worked very well. So you, you could have done it better. Okay, well, let's do it better. But in the first uh, issue is always, uh, you're saying something, but let's see if you can do it. Uh, so you always have to do it. Uh, that's, that's why uh, talking about digital citizenship without having the tools to be able to exercise those rights of digital citizenship is something that is left halfway because you have to create the tools and exercise those tools and exercise the rights with those tools. Thank you, David. Uh, you. Next, we have Alberto. He had a very interesting question about the um, skewness of participation. Yeah, well, um, hello. Uh, Cesar already said it. So in um, the conventional wisdom and also the data when we have them about participation online is that it's very skewed with vocal minorities being responsible for a large part of the activity. And so I was wondering after all these years if you have some insights or if it's different maybe in Rousseau or if it is the same and maybe you can also reflect about uh, skewness in democracy itself and, and how, how that can influence your results. Yes, of course. Well, uh, there is uh, a topic, well, often they, uh, they tell me, well, um, 100,000 people uh, deciding for um, for a movement that has uh, 11 million people that voted for him. Uh, this is often something I receive uh, as a criticism. Uh, but then I see what is happening today. Today in other parties. Today the same decision gets done by one, maybe five people. Uh, so. Yes, it, there might be possible to have more than 100,000 people. Maybe uh, I would like to have a million people. Uh, but it's always best than 100,000 people than uh, uh, one or five people in other parties that define the list or define uh, uh, the program or the decision or whatever. Uh, because that's obviously even more skewed. Uh, on a single person uh, decision or uh, on a single day that uh, that decision gets taken. Um, we, we had an issue at the beginning in 2012 uh, because the members of uh, that we had voting for uh, the, um, the thing, uh, the, the candidates at the time uh, for the first regional election that we did were members of um, the blog. So it was really open. People that uh, didn't necessarily recognize themselves in something or something else, they were just following the blog. Um, <coughs> at the time, we decided to, to uh, limit the uh, possibilities of, ch of choice. So the people who actually could candidate themselves could be only the people that already candidate themselves in the town halls for the Five Star Movement. So it was a, clo a closed choice on an open uh, uh, possibility of getting involved. Uh, so that was the main issue at the, at the beginning because we had an open uh, uh, possibility of coming in and voting. Uh, from then on, we've uh, the possibility of voting so you actually have to do some things during the year uh, to be able to vote uh, so we've tried to define the uh, people who actually can vote uh, and uh, we have a semi uh, open uh, uh, possibility to vote and a semi open uh, possibility to candidate yourselves but there's rules on both sides to be able to do things. Thank uh, you. And this is working uh, really well to now. Thank you, David. And now, you know, last question comes from Fabio Bonsignorio to
continue our tradition of Italian last names. <laughs> We you are mu you're, you, you're muted, Fabio. Uh, the question is that uh, since one of, of the limits of a platform like Rousseau is that you have to centralize data, so it's still a cloud uh, server based uh, architecture. The question that if you wish is kind of suggest uh, question uh, is uh, if you are envisioning the possibility to distribute the platform by using, for example, some blockchain or uh, and uh, on one end and the other if you plan to introduce uh, some ai with human in the loop uh, i i'm afraid uh, to aggregate the proposal uh, because participation and also making proposal and if you want that uh, millions of people participate uh, in proposing a new law or a new set of law you you need to have uh, automation, uh, I think, uh, to aggregate the proposal. So are you doing something in that direction? You plan to, you have objection to do that for some reason? We've, um, uh, we've created, well, the actual system on uh, Rousseau is, uh, is a system that is uh, centralized, uh, but uh, the voting system is completely separated from the registry of uh, the people who can vote and have voted and the votes itself. So no one, not even an administrator of the server can uh, uh, define who's voted what. So this is uh, a, a, a system that we've created to, to be able to have uh, a system that uh, complies with all the uh, best practices for uh, e-voting. We've uh, also uh, created an open source uh, project. Uh, we've presented it in 2019 uh, with a first uh, working uh, uh, project that uh, you can find online if you look for a such a um, um, online you, you will find that uh, all the code, uh, so you can play with it if you want. Uh, we've uh, created a system on Monero, uh, on the Monero blockchain, to be able to co to complete uh, the um, uh, completely uh, guarantee the privacy of the vote, because that was the main issue that uh, was uh, was a problem on uh, on the blockchain. So, for example, all votes on uh, Ethereum. Uh, create a problem on the privacy because if you dig enough, you will be able to uh, see what who's voted for. Uh, so on Monero, you actually can't do that because uh, the the Monero system is is different. Uh, so we have been uh, creating this system. We need to uh, deal with the last loop. We have still haven't uh, uh, solved. So we, once we've uh, close that last loop, uh, we will have a complete system that we're working on blockchain and will guarantee anonymity and distributed certification of the vote. So this is something, obviously we need money to do it, so that's what's uh, limited us in, uh, in uh, completing the project. Yeah, let me rephrase the last part of the question of Fabio, which is like recently, for example, we had Diago Bermejo from, from the city of Madrid and, and they had run participatory budgeting and, and also, you know, digital democracy ideas. And in their platforms, one of the problems that they face is that a lot of people propose things that are very similar. So when you open for participation, you know, basically you might have a hundred people that submit variations of the same idea. For example, you know, in his case, people were complaining about dog poop on the streets of Madrid, you know, and you don't want to have a hundred competing projects that are about, you know, the same topic with a slightly different wording. So in that context, that's why, you know, AI is a way to say, okay, all of this are actually the same, you know, and we're going to create kind of like, you know, one proposal out of all of these proposals and this other cluster is different. So like when it comes to this, um, you know, systems to open the space of, you know, proposals to, to a lot of people, have you encountered that problem of a lot of repetition? Are you using AI to deal with it? 
Yes, uh, we've uh, encountered the problem with the uh, Lexi Scripti, which is the system that allows everyone to vote the law and uh, that then gets voted by other uh, members of the Five Star Movement and then gets taken to Parliament. Uh, this is obviously something that happens very uh, commonly. We've created, there's many definitions of AI. I've actually been studying a lot uh, the um, AI. Um, so on a basic level, uh, we've created some systems that allow to uh, define uh, if it's talking about the same topic. And then we have a human uh, review of, uh, of that to, to allow to, to get to vote. Uh, we have not adopted uh, AI as in the current definition of uh, uh, that, that we have for for rare, rare versions, uh, just because we haven't uh, needed it yet, because we just have maybe in the hundreds and not in the thousands of proposals. So it's something that we can deal with uh, directly with this method. Thank you. So I wanted to conclude by thanking you, Davide, and thanking you, Renato. This was a, a very instructive presentation. And I think also the questions, you know, were interesting. They, they, they allowed us to go into like different directions and, and explore also, you know, a bit of the technology, a bit about the community and revisit some aspects of the history. And I think, you know, you have been very generous with your time and energy to, to join us. And we look forward to continue to be in touch. This is an extremely exciting space. So trust us that a lot of people uh, you know, from this group today are gonna continue to see what, what continues to happen in Italy as you know, uh, the Rousseau platform continues to, to work there, expands, grows, and, and uh, impact the way that Italian politics work. Okay, well, thank you for inviting me and thank you for all the questions I hope uh, I shared something interesting for, for all of you. We are working with a lot of researchers, so we'd like to share, be able to share data and uh, uh, whatever you, you would like to uh, explore in, uh, in the history of voting. Uh, we have plenty of data, so I'll uh, just send my uh, email in the chat. So if you want to write to me, you just uh, uh, write to me an email and we'll be happy to help you out with, uh, with whatever you like to explore. Thank you, Davide. Thank you, Renato. Thank, Thank you. you, Fabio, Alberto, Gerardo, Nicolo, and to the rest of the attendees. Uh, and I'll see you next week. We have just to announce the next seminar. Um, next week, uh, we have Colin Megill. Colin built the police platform that was used in Taiwan during the Sunflower Movement, you know, and is basically the main success story of this V-Taiwan uh, movement from Audrey Tang. Uh, it was a platform that was originally built for the Occupy Movement of the United States in 2011, but found success in Taiwan on 2014. He's a very exciting speaker. He's going to be joining us from Seattle. So look forward to seeing you next week, you know, and hopefully, you know, we're going to continue learning together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.